we're starting with the main one, which of course is Monaghan 217, Tyrone a goal and 18 from Healy Park in Oma. Just an absolutely outstanding game of Gaelic football. Two evenly matched teams. I mean, I like when you look back through the years of the fixtures between Monaghan and Tyrone, you think even of the Ulster final in 2021, that was such a back and forth game. Like these two teams are so evenly matched and they produced one hell of a game here. And I think there were multiple stages where I thought Monaghan have won it. Now Tyrone have won it. And he kept going back and forth and finishes off with the Rhino tool goal. But before we break it down, this was just a brilliant game of Gaelic football. Unreal. It was, it was definitely. And, um, yeah, when you think about Tyrone, definitely had the better of it in the first half. But Monaghan, they stayed in the game with accurate shooting. I think they had 80% accuracy in the first half. Kicked eight shots out of 10, which was brilliant. And uh, But the downside, they only three shots from play. And you were thinking Tyrone should win this pretty easily. But Vinnie Corey must have said something to the Monaghan players at halftime because he definitely got them pumped. I think Conor Amanis mentioned it to Joanne Cantwell at the end of the game as well. That um, Vinny, he's a he's a brilliant lad and motivating players. And you look at Stephen O'Hanlon's goal, that changed everything. Then Tyrone get back into the game with Sloughton and uh, McCurry seems to get the winning point. And you're thinking, you're thinking when Ryan O'Toole gets that ball, you're thinking, okay, we're going to extra time. We're going to be um, here for another while. We're going to be here. We're probably going to push back the podcast here till about 10 o'clock. At this rate, but um, but then no, he went for the goal and he went in fair play to Ryan too. outstanding finish. And it is up there with you know late goals throughout GA history. You look at Mark Keynes in 2020, you look at Conor McKenna's against Kerry in Crow Park that time, you look at um, uh, Seamus Darby's goal in 82, you look at Kevin McMenamin's goal for Dublin against Kerry. It's definitely up there. And Ryan O'Toole has written himself into GA history. Brilliant, brilliant goal and uh, well deserved for Monaghan because they just wanted it more in the second half and they got got there in the end. And yeah, it's a tough one to hit for Toronto now because obviously there's two quarter final defeats in a row in Ulster, and I don't think they'd take it well up there. Oh, without doubt, because I mean, All Ireland champions in 2021, then back to back years, you get knocked out in pretty much the first round of your provincial championship. I know that there is the preliminary round, but Toronto haven't played in that and they get knocked out. Pretty easy by um, by Derry. So I forgot that they beat Fermanagh last year. They beat Fermanagh, then lose to Derry. And then this year, beaten again at the first hurdle. But the thing that would be frustrating about this for Tyrone is they played well. Like, for, for stages this game, they played really, really well. Particularly, as you mentioned, the first half. Let's dive into that. Tyrone in the first half were really, really good. Niall Morgan's kickouts were absolutely fantastic. They were really, really tight at the back. And up front, Derek Hanavan put on an absolute clinic. He did, yeah. And uh, I think he hit, what was it, five shots in the first half, 100% shot conversion. Like, that's crazy. And the finish for oh, the man. goal as well, because he, he, he got through and he lined up his body as if he was going to smash the ball to the left, to his left. And Rory Began dived that way. He opened his body up last second and placed it into the other side of the goal. That's a fantastic finish. He's such a high-quality player. And at 22, this guy's a problem. Yeah, and it was, I think it was quite awkward for his father and uh, the Sunday game uh, panel at halftime. You know, lots of panelists would have praised Dara for that performance, which was outstanding. But Peter kind of had to be on the fence thing, and I uh, oh, wouldn't have wanted to be in his uh, in his shoes there. But uh, you look at Tyrone, the first half outstanding. Yeah, as you mentioned there, they they weren't shooting particularly well when you think about, but it was still a sixty one percent shot conversion rate, which was pretty good. And um, they conceded a lot of frees, and they were very cynical in the first half. I will say that you Noel know, Marcus kick out one hundred percent accurate. That's that is absolutely superb. Like they're they were turning over the ball, they were they were brilliant. And when you look at Monaghan, like we mentioned about Tyrone losing the game but playing well, but Monaghan were kind of it was kind of a situation where Monaghan were all playing in the first half, but again they were playing well. They were playing well up front. They like kicked eight eight points out of the possible ten shots. Like you can't get much better than that, in fairness. And like Manus, he was dragging them in that in that game from freeze. Like you look at um, Connor Boyle was very good. Rory Began at times in the first in the first half he was doing his bit. Like Emmett Fitzmaurice actually mentioned on RT commentary, and they definitely showed my stats as well. That same um, he was kicking it to the Monaghan players, but Monaghan were just bumbling the ball down to Tyrone pressure, 
And to be honest, it was great to see that both sides were playing well and neither of them were playing particularly badly. And you could say this was a brilliant game of football and it was definitely um, a brilliant, brilliant second half in store after that because I was definitely intrigued looking at that. And But having said all that about Tyrone performing well, Peter Canavan mentioned it as well in the Sunday game. They were five points up at half time and they still managed to lose it like, yeah. and playing well. How yeah. did they do that? I don't know. But yeah, it's a one that slipped away for Tyrone despite Monaghan playing well themselves. No, without doubt. I mean, they were 110 to eight points up at half time and they were just getting their scores easier than Monaghan as well. They were kicking points with, you know, more effortlessness. Monaghan were having to work really hard for their scores and that is always a tell for me. I always think, like, just by kind of rule of habit, what's, you know, happened down through the years, I always look at the first 40 minutes and if a team is working really, really hard to get scores and the other team is just, you know, one quick move and they tap it over the bar. I, you know, think surely the other team can keep working this hard to get their scores throughout the entire game. But Monaghan in the second half switched it up. They got so much better. Conor McManus, as you mentioned, carrying the fight to them. Carl O'Connell, I thought, was fantastic as well, attacking them relentlessly from the half back line. And in that second half, a turbo boost, no doubt, was the Stephen O'Hanlon goal. And, you, you know, I mean, you poor fella, you missed it. If you're telling me off air that a fire alarm went off and you missed the O'Hanlon goal, but I'm, I'm sure you've got a chance to watch it back. Just a fantastic, you know, fantastic individual goal by O'Hanlon. And it shows his sense of adventure. Like he is a really exciting player to watch. And I remember him bursting onto the scene against Dublin in the league in 2019. I remember he jumped up above, I believe it was Keno Sullivan or Johnny Cooper. It was one of them plucked the ball out of the air and just ran at the double defence and stuck it in the net. And I remember being like, oh, this guy is this guy is a real adventurous forward that just always goes for goal. And he sniffed that chance out. He, he just saw, I think it was there was a Monaghan forward who was at the end line that had given him the ball and pulled out. And he just saw that space and he thought, I'm going to go by Conor Myler. Like, not even just a normal defender. Like, Conor Myler is a superb defender. And he went past him and buried it in the back of the net. Yeah, what a finish and what a, what a finish. And what a time to miss a goal as well. Like, God, I'm, <laughs> you know, I'm done with these fire alarms. I, I'm looking forward, no shame, to just returning home permanently, to be honest with you. Yeah, it's a brilliant, brilliant place, Scotland. I love the people here. It's brilliant. But these fire alarms... No, I wouldn't recommend coming here now um, if you want to get interrupted during a sleep or something like that just because um, you will get woken up, no doubt about that. But um, enough about my issues, um, more about Stephen O'Hanlon's exploits. What a goal, in fairness. And as far as I remember as well, Rory Bacon was driving up the team at that point as well. And, he looked, and there was a, a kind of a moment where he thought Monaghan are definitely back into this game when Rory Bacon set up Kieran Duffy goalkeeper to full back and you're thinking how are they so far up the field you yeah. know and it's it, it was brilliant and then O'Hanlon that moment of brilliance Michal Bannigan was coming into the game or Conor McManus was still hitting the lights out you look at uh, Conor McCarthy I think um, hit, hit a few points I think he hit a point before O'Hanlon's goal as far as I remember and then he hit one towards the end as well he definitely came into his own in the second half. Shane Harry hit a brilliant point. I think that was after the goal as well. And you're thinking, Monaghan are right back in this game now. And Tyrone brought it to the cost. And again, Tyrone were still doing the right things attack-wise. But Monaghan, the pressure was absolutely relentless. And fair play to them for getting that goal through uh, O'Hanlon. But Tyrone, you have to say, fair play for them for fighting back as well. I think I think Con Kilpatrick got a point straight after. No, Stoughton got a point towards the end. No, and Morgan got a few. So, yeah, I think Tron definitely they, they should get credit for the way they responded as well. No, oh, without doubt. And I mean, coming towards the end, as I said in, at the start of the game's review, there were three or four times that I thought a team had won the game. Conor McCarthy's point in the 69th minute, I thought, right, that's going to be the winner. Then Tron pull it back. And McCurry's point, like again on Dara Canavan, the way he was able to pick that ball up and lay it off to. McCurry, as he's falling to the ground, is absolutely remarkable. Then McCurry swings it over. I think Tyrone are going to win. And then this is the hot take. And I mentioned it to you off air, but I think the angle that O'Toole was coming in at, like, <laughs> he went for it and it was brave. But, like, even though it paid off, yes, now it is the right decision. 
But I genuinely think more often than not, Morgan saves that. I think Niall Morgan should have saved that. And like, look, it was a well-struck shot. But if you watch the replay, a keeper of Niall Morgan's ability. But hey, the ball went in, Monaghan won. And uh, you can't argue with it. Look, it, it did pay off. But do you think he, he definitely took a risk going for the goal? You cannot deny that he took a risk going for the goal. If he had a hand pass the ball over the bar, nobody would have told him that he should have gone for the goal instead. But um, yeah, what do you think of that? Just on the side though, Seamus, I think it'd be a great fun of parties. I will, I will say that. But um, <laughs> like, like, in fairness, you have to say, like I, I said it's the off air as well, Getting in that situation, if you put yourself in Royal Tool shoes, like I'll ask you a question: What would you have done in that situation? Would you have popped it over, or would you have gone for it? I don't know, to be honest. I really don't know. I probably would have hand passed it over the back. Like I probably would have, because the angle he came in at was so narrow. And I, I actually think I, I wonder what you think about this. I actually think Cormac Monroe was standing right beside Niall Morgan. And when that shot came in, Monroe naturally went to block it. And I actually think that if you if you watch Noah Morgan, he didn't really command the penalty box or the six yard box the way that he normally does there. And Monroe kind of was in his space, so Noah Morgan kind of went out very narrowly. And I feel like if Monroe wasn't there, he almost might have had a better chance to save that. Maybe so, like, but him. Um... If I was in this situation, I definitely would have fisted it over. I think everybody on the online community in the GA would have fisted that uh, over. And uh, look, it's amazing when you think about it because Tyrone, they were defending a lead. Look, I see your viewpoint on this. They were defending a lead. And you're thinking, you should have more men back than this. And mm-hmm. they'd only put a good row and nine Marvin on the line. And they didn't really make a good attempt to block it, did they? That was, but that's what the crazy that, thing is, is that like Tyrone were are kind of known for having a really tight defense but they as as was said in the in the pundit box they conceded nine goals in the league and then the way that they conceded that last goal was they got the opening pretty easy like mm. yeah they didn't and really then... do anything magic there and Tyrone kind of just left that space open mm. yeah and that's that's the, the new Tyrone as we all see like they do have attacking talent to Darren McCurry and Darren Canavan but they need a strong defence as well. And they didn't see... I think... I thought Tyrone turned the corner. I watched that game against Armagh the last game of the league. I was thinking, Tyrone, they're doing everything to block Armagh. Well, I remember Justin Kiernan had a chance for Armagh at that last league game to keep mm-hmm. Armagh in the league. And Tyrone were throwing bodies in front of them. So you're thinking, yeah. how could that not be blind today? You know, it's... True. Maybe it's the fact they hate Armagh. I don't know. Um, yeah, no, they, you knew that they would just want to relegate Armagh. Like, they do anything to do that. But... Then contrasting it to Monaghan at the other end, when they got that goal, which, by the way, I haven't given it enough credit. It was a very good finish and from Mm. a very difficult position. And talk about having the bravery and the guts to go for it. It was a magnificent like moment there to see him running away. And then sure enough, he gets injured. I think what was it, 30 seconds later? But like, yeah, fantastic moment in the championship. And it will be one of the moments of the year, no doubt, at the end of the GA season. But to see how Monaghan were so different compared to Tyrone. Once Monaghan got ahead with that goal, I was pretty sure that they'd done the Kilmacud Krogs trick and thrown on a 16th player to go and stand in the box. It, it, it seemed like the entire county of Monaghan was between Tyrone and that goal. They were not going to let them get a sniff. And they did defend that last Tyrone attack very well. They did. And it showed, it actually showed how much they wanted us, Monaghan. Mm-hmm. They wanted to win an Ulster title. But they haven't won one since 2015. That's eight years ago now. So I think an Ulster title would be more vital to Monaghan than it would to Tyrone. And on a side note as well, the Rhino 2 uh, getting carried off. It was almost like, um, you know, his coronation or something. Yeah, he, uh, you know, the, the Kings getting dragged off. Yeah. And <laughs> you're the saviour, you're the saviour, Monaghan. And, uh, you're being dragged off here, but... Yeah, it was um, exactly. so many things. You'd, you'd have to question as well, I'll go back to it, but Monaghan were so vigorous in defence, not conceding that goal towards the end. Why couldn't Tyrone do it towards the end? I know it's a brilliant goal from Ryan too. Moment of the year already. We've had two moments of the year, even New York last week as well. So even at week two in the championship and we have two moments of the year contenders already, which is incredible in its own right. Yeah. But 
but you have to question about uh, Tyrone's defence. How how were they so open at the back? How did they? How even did they let Ryan O'Toole in that much space? That's what I'd be questioning about uh, Tyrone in the first place. But again, you have to credit Monaghan because. Usually, um, other counties would just, um, you know, shape up, go for a point with Conor McManus, get it to the shooter, get it to Jack McCarron if he was on the pitch at that time, or anybody that could actually shoot good points and put it over the bar. But they were willing to find Ryan O'Toole and go for the kill. And in fairness mm. to Monaghan, for that bravery, they deserve to win the game. They might not have been the better team all day, but just for that moment alone, they deserved an unfair play to them. And, yeah, as you said, the whole county of Monaghan was behind the ball at that, um, that goal towards the end. How fitting was it that Conor McManus, the man of the match yeah. in RT, took the ball out and the whistle blew? Brilliant moment. Yeah, fantastic. And uh, both teams deserve huge credit for producing a fantastic game of Gaelic football. And definitely that is game of the year so far for me. Yet to be beaten, but uh, we will see at the end of the year. Hopefully, this standard of Gaelic football continues throughout the year. So, uh, big respect to both teams. That was one hell of a game. And congratulations to Monaghan into the Ulster semi-final, where they will face Derry.